Welcome back to another uh, week where myself and Michael Baker are getting together to talk about his program. We're into week three now. Um, so firstly, Michael, we're Friday, just about the end of week three. How's this past week been for you, mate? Yeah, good. Yep. Any, um, any sore spots, any sort of dramas or problems that you've noticed? Still coping with the training okay? No, not no no dramas. I mean, I, there's. I feel again, it seems strange, but after only three weeks, I do feel that there's been some adaptation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm finding the strength. So the few things that I was struggling with, the strength stuff, uh, where I was pulling up sore the day after and the day after, not not anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's that's good. Um, I will start a bit gingerly, first few <laughs> sets of press ups. <laughs> Yeah. But then I, you know, as, as things get there, the one legged drills, getting much better at those. Yep. Yep. Um, and just f- feeling stronger. Yep. Yep. Look, yeah. and I've, overall, that's the type of feedback that I'm looking for. So the fact that your the repeatability is a big thing, the fact that you can, you know, get back up and get that consistency in your training. So that means your body's adapting to the training. You know, as you said, you start, you're a little bit sore, but then once you get into it, you can feel the improvements. So that's an instinctual thing. It's not just also what the data is telling you, but it's an instinctual thing. And that's, I think, a really important thing to remember in this day and age where there's so much data to tell us everything about, you know, and the data is good, but we also need to have that instinct to to let us know how we're feeling. So I thought what we do today is actually just run through your program to give people an idea. So I'll go to the share screen. So it's just on a word doc. So Monday, we started with an endurance swim, four by 600 with 30 seconds rest. And this is an important thing. Very easy when it comes to swimming to do it on a time cycle. And I think we need to move away from that and look at, well, let's just look at giving rest and the body will give you what it'll give you on a certain day. If I was to give you say, all right, Michael, I want you to do four 600s on 10 minutes. Now, one week that could feel really easy, but the next week it could feel, you know, not so easy. So I, I believe we're probably better off prescribing rest after each interval. And this particular session, so we're mixing up. The first one was an easy pull. Second and third ones were pull and paddle with an easy 75, hard 25 for 600. And then the fourth was 50 streamline on the back, 150 swim with fins. So firstly, thinking back to Monday, how did you find that set? Yeah, I found it. I found that relatively easy. Yep, yep, yep. And that's that was it's an endurance swim. So what we were trying to do there is build up a level of aerobic capacity, um, and by throwing in those hard twenty fives at the end of the easy seventy five, we're working on change of pace. So in an open water swim in a race, sometimes you might have to surge a little bit to get on someone's feet or get around a boy or the start or whatever. So having that change of pace, but also when you're doing the hard 25s, we're getting, we're recruiting the muscle fibers that will help us develop the power. Okay. Because we need that sort of change of pace sometimes. And then the streamline on the back, that's a good one because as triathletes, we can often get into this hunched over position and just by reversing our posture, getting into a nice streamlined position, that just is uh, good for postural alignment as well. Um, okay, the easy run in the afternoon. So how are you going with the sort of the breathing only through the nose in terms of how it's feeling? Yeah, so I'm running, I'm running within myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got a watch which really takes heart rate and it measures the heart rate here. Yep. I don't know, is that accurate? But, and I'm trying to keep my heart rate under 130 as I'm running. Mm-hmm. Just, and, and not that I pay a huge amount of attention to it, but I'm not laboured in any way. Yep, yep. And that, that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. That's what we're looking for because remember, we're trying to improve the aerobic capacity and the aerobic energy system. So, you know, about 80% of our overall total volume should be at that where you're not laboured, you're feeling as though you could, you know, at the end of 45 minutes, I'm assuming you feel as though you could keep running if you wanted to. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And I've, yeah, I've thought about that, you know, I'll, I'll just keep going. <laughs> I think that's one of the good things about, the, I, you know, about the session is that I think a lot of these sessions you should feel mm. towards the end, not that you've had enough. 
Mm. Oh my God, I've had enough. I mm. can go on. Yes, absolutely. And that, that gives you the repeatability, the, the ability to back up and do another session the next day. Um, so the next morning we had the trainer. Mm. Um, so this one, easy 15 minutes we're building. So we're just lifting the body temperature, building the cadence and building the heart rate slowly before we go into some high RPM 15 seconds at 120 plus RPM. How do you find those? Yeah, no problem. No problem. Yeah. By, mi by mixing up, so we do the, you know, the 10 by 15 second high RPM, and then we go into 10 by 45 second one-legged drill in the hardest possible gear. How are you finding the one-legged drills? Yeah, I'm getting, be I'm getting better at it. Yep, yep, yep. So, so when you at, at first I found that difficult. Yeah. So when you say you're getting better, what what are the feelings that you're experiencing when you think you're getting better? How's it? How do you measure okay, so that? More control. Yep. Smoother. Yep. Heart rate's lower. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. And can go for longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are really good, and you want to do them in a hard gear again because you remember triathlon. To, to achieve success in triathlon, you've got your central cardiovascular system and then you've got your peripheral system. So your, your skeletal muscular system, your neuromuscular system. And these one-legged drills help improve your strength and efficiency. So you feeling, you're saying that you're feeling as though you're more controlled, heart rate is mm -hmm. lower, and that's the effect that we want. So come the back end of the race, we've, we've improved your fatigue resistance. You're, mm. you're not decelerating or you're not dropping power. And mm. when we throw in the high RPM to start, we're doing some quick neuromuscular patterning, but we're also working on the strength. And then we finish just with a little bit of intensity, five by 90 seconds, hard gear, but at a fairly high heart rate. How are you finding those? Yeah, so I'm working for that 90 seconds and yeah. 30 seconds is just enough, you know, just enough to be able to go again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and yeah. Pred predominantly this session, what's your overall RPE out of 10? How would you rate it out of 10? It's strange because it, 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 it varies. And this is something that I struggle with a little bit because I, I seem to, it doesn't matter what it is, I recover pretty well. Mm. Yeah, so... The reason you recover is because you've got a long history as an athlete and you've got a reasonably established aerobic capacity already. Yeah, yeah. So those those 90 second efforts, they are eight, nine out of 10. Yeah. You know, they're hard. And the 30 second recovery, am I 100% recovered? No. Can I go again? Yes. Yep. But the other stuff, I'm just, I'm finding it easier. Perfect. So the the one-legged drills on the week one I found very difficult. Mm. You know, I found it difficult from a uh, um, my heart rate was elevated. I wasn't I wasn't in control. I didn't feel efficient. Yeah. Uh, so my memory, you know, it's not as if with any of these sessions, as if anything's. It's like okay, well, the session lasted for an hour, and I was at threshold for the hour. Hmm. Does that make sense? So yeah. my lasting memory tends to be of, I look at the overall session hmm. rather than the bits of it, but that, that would be one of the harder sessions, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it, overall, in terms of the stress that we've placed on your system from a, you know, hormonal and a central nervous system, it's not extensive. I mean, there's no hmm. weight bearing. There's a little bit of intensity there, but not too much. So we're, you know, the majority of the session is still in the aerobic intensity, but we're touching the threshold. We're touching mm. the high intensity. So it's called layering. We're doing a little bit of everything in this session, but it's not stressing you in a super hard way that you can't back up. Mm. And that's why it's good. And it, it, these are great sessions just to improve that efficiency and develop the fatigue resistance. And then, you know, going into the afternoon, doing that strength session, which we've spoken about before in terms of, you know, your push-ups, lunges, squats, prone holds. And that's all about, you know, improving lean muscle mass. And just as we get older for masters athletes, we don't need to get to the gym. So with these strength sessions, how are you finding them? Are they getting easier, harder? Yeah. No, getting easier. Yeah. Um, yeah. Getting easier. And I'm not as sore 
like the yeah. first week I was very sore the day after and the day after that. Yeah. Uh, the next week, not so much. And this week, it, they, you know, I've, I've pulled up well after those sessions and I've gotten into them easier. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Yeah. And it, that's the, the fact that you're, you know, you're adapting pretty well as a sign of your experience as an athlete. You know, if, if you were a newer athlete and you didn't have that experience, you wouldn't be adapting to the sessions as well as you are. So these are all good signs. So moving into Wednesday, we're back into a swim run. Um, and the swim started with 10 by 100 easy choice to start, 15 seconds rest. And then we're doing some change of pace, 150s. Again, using pull paddle band, starting with an easy 50 into a moderate 50 and then a hard 50. So did you feel as though you were able to increase your pace through each 50 in the 150 meter efforts? Yeah, definitely. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, the easy was easy. The moderate felt like the sort of pace that I could sustain for a yep. long period of time. Yeah. And the hard, hard. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And that, that again is a good session that it, it teaches you to understand what your pace is in a race. In an open mm. water race, you should be able to, okay, I'm swimming easy. No, no, I'm swimming moderate. I could probably hold this pace for Harvey Bay in a couple of weeks. You'll probably look at doing it at a moderate pace, you know, a 2K yeah. swim. It'll be about a moderate intensity. If you yeah. go hard, you'll get out of the water and you'll be a bit cooked for the rest of the day. But yeah. an athlete like yourself will be able to swim at a moderate pace. Mm. Um, and then the run, so we're backing up for another run and it's just putting another brick in the foundation, you know, just another run to develop that aerobic capacity, doing more strides. How are you going with the strides? Yeah, good. Um, the first time I did this, I just did up and back on the same, the strides I did on the same piece of ground, over the mm. same piece of ground. What I'm doing now is as I'm running home, I'm turning that those strides into a bit of a, almost like a fartlek. Yeah. So I'll run a little bit harder, you know, stride out for for uh, 15 seconds or so, or 50 metres, 50, 60 metres, then back off easy, then go again, then back off easy. And I make sure the last one is on a down, you know, when I run out from here, I run immediately uphill. Mm. When I'm coming back, I'm coming downhill. So I make sure that last one's on a bit of a downhill and then I ease it off and jog home. Yeah, perfect. Um, so we're also, when you're doing on the downhill, we're getting some eccentric loading on the tendons and the ligaments and the joints. So that's actually really, really good in terms of, again, developing that strength, that muscular strength, because our limiting factor for an athlete like yourself is not your aerobic capacity. It's your muscular, mm. it's your skeletal, it's your muscular skeletal system. You know, how mm. long can it maintain pace or power on the bike and the run? And so the strides mm. help us with that. So Thursday, we're back onto the bike. So riding in the hardest possible gear with the mm. sprint. How are you managing the, uh, the short 10-second sprints? Yeah, uh, well, uh, this is the one session that I didn't do to program. Okay, do you tell. So I've been, going, I've been going out and riding and sticking to the program and riding on my own for the last three weeks. And I woke up early. There's a group that I used to ride with. Mm. And I woke up early on uh, Thursday and I knew they were heading out and, thought, oh, and they were going to do two hours. So I'll, just, I'll jump in with those guys. And the first probably 15 minutes, I was like, you shouldn't be doing this because they're <laughs> going pretty hard. Right? But I just sat off the back and I kept it in a big gear. Yeah. And eventually what happens is someone burns off or someone turns off and the intensity goes down. And then I spent the rest of the, the ride we did we did over undulating terrain and i spent in time in a big gear to the point where people were sitting behind me going michael the gear leaders on the right <laughs> <laughs> so this week i didn't put in those sprints but i certainly did the ride in 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 a big gear and and i felt strong you know mm. that, we went up one climb where i kind of got dropped because i was in a big gear mm. and my cadence was really low but i knew that's what i needed to do I didn't want to blow myself up from a, you know, elevating my heart rate too much by you know, mm. spinning. But then I got back on and I feel, I feel strong on the bike. It's always been a, you know, it's been a strength of mine in the past, mm. but I definitely feel my legs are stronger at the moment. You know, good. they're getting stronger, which good. is a good thing. Yeah. And um, 
By riding in that hardest possible gear, we're continuing to stimulate our slow twitch fibers. So an athlete like yourself that's got a long background in long course racing, predominantly your body, your muscle fiber type will be, you know, the slow twitch fibers. So that's what we yeah. need for long yeah. course racing. And by doing these rides in the hardest possible gear, there's tension on the pedals the whole time. You know, sometimes you see athletes, especially triathletes, they'll just spin around and they're yeah. just, you know, they're not really achieving too much. Um, yeah. So, you know, for, for something like that, it's interesting, you know, that, um, that you're feeling stronger because that is what we want. So, you know, in, in regards to 10 second sprints, that's that concept of layering again, layering again, where we're just touching the neuromuscular system. So whilst we yeah. want to, you know, we want to stimulate the, the fast twitch fibers. We also, we also need to work on the type two a fast twitch fibers to, you know, to stimulate them as well. All right. And then sometimes you'll have your type two B fast twitch fibers, which you can turn into slow twitch fibers, but you can't really change your, your fast twitch fibers, but predominantly we're trying to develop your slow twitch fibers, which builds fatigue resistance and allows you to hold power for longer. And that's, you know, so the deceleration process is not as significant. So then we follow up with another strength session and back into the swim today. So today was a, a pure speed one where we were doing a two by 100 on three mm. minutes hard with the paddles. Yeah. So before we started recording, you said you were holding about 123, 124 for the hundreds. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then there's a 25 meter pool. There's an Olympic pool around the corner from me, which I went mm. to. Sometimes they have it in a, as a 50, and sometimes they have they've got other things going on. Yeah. And today, 25. Yeah. 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 And so, repeated that set four times through. Were you able to maintain your times for each set? Yeah. And do you think you could have done a fifth or sixth set and maintained times? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. That's good. So next week. You know, we might look at, you know, last week we were, we were doing hard 50s. We'll probably mm. look at that session again in a couple of weeks, but we'll add some more volume onto it. So if we mm. want to get a greater adaptation, we're either going to increase volume or increase intensity. So we're going to maintain the intensity, but increase the mm. volume. Mm. And then you've got a, um, a quickish run this evening with some 15-second mm. fast and 45-second recovery. And the fast is at that 3K race pace. So that'll be slightly more intensity before we go back into an aerobic weekend. And based on, I guess, how you're adapting and how you're feeling, and we're four weeks out from race day, four weeks out from race no, day? No, it's, uh, uh, it's five. It'll be five weeks on Sunday. Five weeks, five weeks. So next weekend, I would say what we'll probably do is this Saturday ride will increase a little bit and maybe start to throw in some back-ended efforts. Yeah, then that's all about. So we'll increase the run as well to 75 minutes. So add, mm -hmm. add volume. And with the, the ride on the Saturday, probably up that slightly to three hours, 15, three hours, 20, but throw in some slightly faster than race pace intervals in that last hour to recruit mm -hmm. again, the slow twitch fibers, but also improve your threshold. So we're mm -hmm. nudging that threshold up and that's, you know, all about, fatigue resistance so overall we seem to be moving in the right direction would you say that yeah yeah and no, i'm very happy yeah, yeah yeah good good and you know anyone the thing is the programming it's not super complicated we're just looking at who yeah. you are and what your circumstances are what your background is what you're training for and putting mm -hmm. in an appropriate load for you at the right time now we could i i I, you know, we could probably increase this load by 30 or 40%, but mm. the, the risk would be significantly higher. You know, the risk of mm. doing a little bit too much, not being able to get the repeatability and the consistency is, is, is not worth the risk. So we're, you know, we're, we're, we're challenging you. We're not breaking you. And that's, that's really yeah. what it's all about at the moment. Mm. Mm. All right. Okay. So I'll the share. All good. So, things are moving along the right direction um i yeah. think we keep building that continue to build the aerobic capacity slight start to add a little bit more volume into the session so you can stress your system get greater adaptations mm -hmm. and before too long race day will be here yeah can i ask you a question mark sure just a general question you know i'm just i'm obviously aware that we're recording this and this is going to go up on social media 
you use with other athletes you use training peaks or yeah yeah training peaks yeah yeah okay and you're an advocate of training with power yes primarily but yeah. obviously some athletes don't have it but my preference is power if, yeah. if when you're working with athletes online having that accessibility to power and heart rate is really beneficial so i can start to evaluate how they're going yeah, yeah. I just wanted to bring that up because obviously I, in my profession, I talk to a lot of triathletes mm. and they talk to me about coaching and they talk about power. And I personally have made the decision, you know, I don't have a training piece account. Mark and I talked about this and I'm more than comfortable getting my, you could write it on the back of a coaster, my program, it wouldn't bother <laughs> me. In the side it. But I'm, I'm just aware that some people might be looking at this going, oh, at Mark Turner, he only, you know, he doesn't <laughs> use training beats. I'm not going to. You know, so, guys, yes, you can get your program via training beats. Yeah. And I, I don't have a power meter. I do have a compu trainer and other power based trainers, and I can monitor my power inside. And I think intuitively, because I've been doing this for such a long mm. time, nearly 30 years in triathlon, and I've run a compu trainer, multi ride studio, and I pretty know, much know what I'm pushing. Yeah, I could tell yeah. you within 10 watts what I'm pushing. I reckon I've got a pretty good handle on that. Mm -hmm. So just from, again, you know, those that are watching, um, if you do have a power meter, then Mark likes the data. Oh, look, it, the data is great because, like I said, it just allows me to look at patterns and how the athlete is progressing. Mm -hmm. But more than anything, I take more from the questions and the answers. Yeah. You telling me how you're feeling and what you're... Yeah. what your perceptions are that I get more value from than the data, but you put it, you put it all together in a picture. Um, I agree totally. It's the yeah. same with the bike, but you know, I've got a lot of technology mm. Mm. and I get a lot of, you know, I get a lot of numbers and ranges, angles, etc. but mm. the feedback that I'm getting, what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing, what the client's telling me is, is overrides yes. numbers that yeah. I necessarily get back from a retool system or. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, yeah, look, hundred percent. And I, at the end of the day, if the data stops, you st like you're driving a car, for instance, all right. And if <laughs> if all the devices in your car stop, you still got to look at the windscreen and where you know decide where to go. The same yeah. with the devices and data. You still you still got to be able to make decisions yourself. So yeah, yeah. I have a quick story. I had a client come into me seventy point three a few weeks ago on the Sunshine Coast. She loves her data. She's got a power meter, stages power meter. We came and we did a fit optimization on the Friday. The race was on Sunday and she wasn't in the best shape of her life. So she was really worried about number one about the race. Anyway, on Saturday, she calls me, Michael, the top cap on my stages power meter has fallen off. I can put another battery in, but I can't keep, and I can't keep it in because do you have another cap? I said, no, I don't. She said, what am I going to do? I said, just turn all the data off. Just race, you know, check in with yourself every now and then. How does this feel? Is this sustainable, et cetera, et cetera. She won her age group. Mm. At the end of the day, it comes down to, you know, you've got to be in tune. It doesn't matter what the numbers say, because sometimes they can be wrong. Absolutely. And sometimes you can't live up to the number anyway. You've got to, you've got to react to your body. Mm. Mm. I think the pros have to react, obviously, to what's going on around them. Mm. That's important. You know, the race is up the road and I need to be there. Mm. But for most age groupers, it's it's your best effort on that particular day. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. So data is great, but let's not, it's not the bear on end all. Yeah. Mm. All right, mate. That's good for another good week. We'll do this Thank again you. next week. Okay, cheers.